Okay, welcome everyone. Welcome, welcome, welcome to Lawrence Township High School. Uh, my name is Sam Fierre. You should probably know that because I tried to greet every single person that walked in the door and shake your hand. Um, thank you for showing up here tonight. We have a nice presentation for you. Um, our goal, I think, tonight is to be very informative to you, um, explain as much as we can, ease any jitters that you may have um, regarding scheduling and high school. If I can see a show of hands, how many parents in this room, this is their first child coming into the high school? Okay, that's a pretty good amount. All right, so we probably have some nerves to, to settle, but maybe not so much because you've been through this. Uh, in Lawrence, you change schools quite often. So you come from an elementary school to an intermediate school, which is a change. From an in intermediate school to a middle school, which is a change. So this is just yet your last final stop on the Lawrence tour. So, um, I would like to first start out by um, saying that everyone, if I could, I, I, I didn't bring my prop with me, can I borrow that real quick? Everyone should have a program of studies. This is your key to learning about any, everything and anything that you need to know about Lawrence High School in regard to academics and scheduling and courses that we offer. Also inside, you will see a nice little cheat sheet that we have created for you. Um, they're called freshman electives, and these electives are all the electives that are available to incoming freshmen. Now, in this course of studies book, you will see over 300 courses. Now, all 300 courses are not available to freshmen. You will see that some courses are only seniors, some courses are juniors and seniors, some courses sophomore, junior and senior, um, and so on and so forth. Um, now, what I told the kids today, um, and we met with all, all the kids at the middle school this afternoon and this morning, and gave them a little overview of, of what to expect when they come to high school, is we told them, imagine um, there is this gigantic, huge pot, all right, outside of, Lawrence High School. And what we do is we take every course and we pour it into the pot and every, pot, every course is in there. And what we do is we take all the kids out, including them, I told them you're gonna be freshmen, and we line them up outside of the school and guess who is in the front of the line? Picking first, the seniors. So the seniors come into that pot and they take their courses. The juniors come in, they take their courses. The sophomores come in and take theirs, and then the freshmen come in and take theirs. Now, the bad news is, yeah, you're a freshman, and maybe you're at the end of the line, but the good news is, when you're a senior, you're in the front of the line. And the reason for that is this. As a freshman, you think of it mostly as a liberal arts college. A liberal arts college, your freshman year, come in, you have to take all the courses that you have to take, right? your English comp 101, your bio, all of those things, you gotta get them out of the way. And by the time you get into your junior year, you're starting to get into your major and your courses and the things that you really want. It's really no different in high school. By the time you're a senior at Lawrence High School, provided that you've passed everything and done everything you've had to, to do, the only courses that are required of you are phys ed and English four. The other six classes you choose. So there are a lot of electives to be able to choose from in this book. So what we're looking at to do tonight is yes, there's really not a lot of choosing to do. However, there are some choices to make, but we want to map a strategic um, road through high school to get to the ultimate goal of graduation and to set them up for success in whatever venture they want to do. Whether that be college, whether that be career, whatever, we got to set it up right from the beginning and form a plan to get to the end. Okay, so without any further ado, I'd like to do some quick introductions. First person I'd like to uh, introduce you to is David Adam. He is our high school principal. However, Mr. Adam, lucky dog that he is, is in Florida right now on a conference with Mrs. Malofsky, um in Orlando. So. He wanted me to let you know, how you doing? <laughs> Next is Mrs. Jessica Sakata, and she is right over there. 
Mrs. Sakata's 10th grade assistant principal and 11th grade H through N. We also have Mrs. Faye Lopez. Mrs. Lopez is the 9th grade assistant principal. You'll get to know her next year. Now, you're probably thinking, oh gosh, assistant principal. Assistant principals are not a very small portion of their job as discipline. They are involved in everything involving their grade level, what they're doing. So you'll get to know your assistant principal all the way through, and they stay with their, uh, their students all the way through until graduation. Mr. Clifford Williams is here. He is the 12th grade assistant principal and 11th grade uh, O through Z. There he is. And Sam Fiera, he's a good looking fellow. I don't know exactly where he is, but um, he's a supervisor of a guidance career programs. That's me, by the way. I didn't hear anybody laugh when I said that. So. Okay, we also now have our instructional supervisors. Each instructional supervisor is gonna come up and each assistant principal is gonna come up and talk a little bit about the subjects and what we have to offer. The first is our science and mathematics supervisor. That's Mrs. Yvette Panasovic. Up next we have Dr. Mary Dillon. She's the humanities supervisor, English history, world languages, and ESL. Dr. Dillon is here, there she is. Um, we have Mrs. Heidi Rosen. Also here, she is the special education um, supervisor for grades seven through 12. We have our athletic director, health PE and athletic supervisor. That's Mrs. Allison Fisher, she's here. And Dr. Damian Barriexa, he is the arts and technology supervisor. There he is there. So you will get to meet each and every person tonight. So before we head into our slides, and I turn it over to Mrs. Lopez, at the conclusion of our presentation tonight, and I think a lot of people are um, anxious about this because I've gotten only one question from everyone walking in tonight, and that is, do you know what time this thing ends? <laughs> so um, our goal is to try to keep this informative, but not too long and not boring. So to keep it exciting, fresh, and informative to you, and then have a Q&A session at the end briefly, like 10 minutes, of only a general nature of a question. If you have a specific question, what we're going to do in, in, in respect to everyone is to stay after and answer any questions anyone has, just come on up and ask us so the people that really just wanna go home can leave. All right, so without any further ado, Mrs. Sincata, I'm sorry. Since I'm with the freshmen this year and moving up with them uh, to the sophomore level, next year, Ms. Lopez and I are gonna tag team the next few slides. The big piece about welcoming our freshmen to the high school is the transition across the parking lot from the middle school to the high school. So we're going to talk about that. We're going to talk about the, the academic support that we provide to them, literacy development in the ninth grade and how that carries through the rest of the high school and school involvement and school spirit. First of all, transition to high school. What will happen in August is our freshman seminar, our peer leadership group. Um, which is upperclassmen. They lead the freshmen through the building on a tour, through activities that help them get, one, get to know one another, get to know some of the upperclassmen, because those are the students they're gonna see on the first day of school who are identified through a red peer leadership, student leadership um, T-shirt. So they have some go-to people around the building, but they get a little sneak peek of the building before they have to come on their first day and try to figure that all out for the first time. So that's a big piece of our summer. As well as freshman seminar, that's some time that we've set, set aside throughout the school year. Right now it's during lunches. We're looking at some other ways we can do that where the um, student leadership, the, the upperclassmen, meet with them, uh, the small group of freshmen throughout the year to continue almost like that buddy system where they have that upperclassmen to have some conversations with just about struggles of schools, about successes in high school, pieces like that. So that's some peer-to-peer -peer relationships that happen here at Lawrence High School. Next, our cardinal nest in our office hours are two pieces where it's teacher to student. Here we have um, a freshman academy. That's the group of teachers who teach freshmen. Um, and we try to keep that a tight-knit group. Those teachers meet together regularly. And office hours, once a month, the students can come in on a Monday after school and all those teachers are in one room together. So if they wanted some help from teachers, they can get it there. That's one of the places they could get it. And that's just a freshman cohort of group group together. Cardinal Nest is actually peer, um, 
peer-to-peer -peer for freshmen during lunches on A days. We have some of our upperclassmen uh, National Honor Society students who could offer some tutoring in a quiet portion of the library. So that's one time and during the school day. They don't have to stay after. Um, and it's not the teacher. It's from a, a, an upperclassman student. The last two, homework center and destinations. Destinations they've, they've had in the middle school. They've had it some of the um, upper at LIS and some of the elementary schools. After school for an hour or two, not a mandatory piece, but a time that they could meet with some teachers, as well as a homework center, which is come and go. And that's for 9 through 12th. Greater. So if that's something they get involved in at ninth grade, it can continue all the way through high school. So with that, we're going to step into literacy. Okay, so one of the focuses for the school this year, um, and it's actually our building goal, is to improve our freshman writing um, scores um, through looking at particularly timed writing assignments. And this is a result of um, National trends as far as looking at getting our kids ready for college. Um, we're hearing from universities and as, you know this is kind of a national trend as far as looking at you know are our kids really ready for career and college. So um, one of the things that we wanted to look at particularly here at Lawrence High School is um, looking at literacy instruction and writing in particular and Branching out from that, kind of looking at reading instruction as well. So one thing that we've done this year is really focus on that by looking at the freshman cohort, um, doing some timed writing with them, meeting with teachers, and looking at writing instruction across the curriculum, so not just the English teachers. And we're meeting um, with all of the freshman teachers, all the freshman academy teachers. Uh, we, we have a consultant coming in regularly, actually every month, to work with this uh, group of teachers to look at instruction and ways that we can improve and to have a cohesive approach to, towards teaching literacy. And another thing that we wanted to stress through the freshman academy is just getting involved. Um, we've actually, when we say LHS data, we actually pulled data from um, our own students and this is actually reflective of um, national studies as well. And that um, freshman students involved in activities earn a GPA of nearly one point higher than those not involved in an activity. And we see this played out, like I said, um, in all kinds of national surveys and national studies as well. The more involved students are, the better they do. Um, one would think that the more involved they are, that they would have less time for academics. But for those who have children involved in activities like I do, that it actually helps them to focus and, and plan their times more wisely. Um, we have over 25 clubs and activities here at, our, uh, at Lawrence High School, um, and that number changes because we create clubs and activities based on student interests. So um, if, if a group of students get together and they really want to start a club, and that's a, actually a fairly easy process as long as they can find a faculty advisor who will uh, work with them. And we have a lot of really, um, you know, open teachers to uh, working with kids, especially who are excited and um, eager to get involved in their school. And another thing that we, we want to talk about is school spirit events. Um, of course, we have pep rallies. Um, we have um, uh, other school spirit events. One thing that we want to talk about, and you might have even seen some posters as you walked in about LHS Madness, which is actually a new thing that we're doing this year. We really wanted to tap in and, and grow our traditions here at Lawrence High School. Um, and so that's kind of a month-long event that's going on right now um, that will culminate into an, uh, a red and white night activity, which is sort of like a competition thing, but it's not by classes, it's actually by half the school. So that's something that we're pioneering this year. Um, we have. Uh, a lot of kids really excited and involved in that activity, and that's something that your students, when they come in as freshmen, it's a new activity, and, and we're excited for them to be here and to get involved um, in all the different ways that they can. I forgot I still had more to do on this. Okay. So um, as far as um, requirements for graduation. now. We live in the state of New Jersey. The state of New Jersey has its requirements for students to be able to graduate. Now, what's different for, for middle school students that they've never had to deal with before is accountability when it comes to courses and 
what they take for credit. Credit's a new word. A credit, one full credit, is equivalent to one past full year class. So you take English all year, your freshman year, you pass the class, you get one credit. You take a semester course, which is a half year course, and pass the course, you get 0.5 credits. Obviously, you take two together, you can do the math. That's, that equals one credit. So, how many credits do you need to graduate? You need 27 credits. The good news is, every student, for the most part, takes eight full credits a year. Eight times four is 32, you need 27. So, I guess you have five to, you know, be able to fail, but you don't want to say that to any of your kids, obviously. So, there should be a difference between what is required to graduate versus what is required to have on a transcript to be able to move on to a college and a competitive college. There is quite a difference. English, every student is required to take four years of, which means four credits. American history, every student is required to take two years of it. Now this is just graduation. World history, one year. Mathematics, three years. Science, three years. World language, one year. Financial literacy, a half year. Physical education and health, four years. That's three quarters of phys ed. One quarter of health. I don't want to speak too much about it because uh, our supervisor of uh, phys ed and health will go into more about it. Visual and performing arts, one year. 21st century life careers and technical, one year. Those are minimums. Not to be confused with what you want, would like to have on a transcript to be able to market yourself to a competitive college. Also, it used to be last year or the year before, um, there was a test called the HESPA, the High School Proficiency Assessment, which every junior had to pass in order to be able to graduate um, from the state of, in the state of New Jersey. That is no longer the case. There is no HESPA anymore. Now we have the park. But they just instituted the park, so they don't want to make that a requirement to pass yet. So all the way up to the class of 2020, which is the incoming freshman, um, you have to pass at least one qualifying assessment from each side. Is, it works now? Oh, great. So in the English language arts side, if they, for example, next year take the park in ELA, they score a 750 or better, they've already qualified then to graduate. If they don't reach it, then they have all those other years to reach it. And if they don't reach it in the park, they also have other options such as the SAT, the ACT, the Accuplacer, the PSAT, the ACT Aspire, and the ASVAB, which we actually just administered today. Mathematics, same thing. There are scores there. These are the minimum scores. This basically is New Jersey's way of saying, okay, you've passed everything at your school. Let's make sure you really learned it and make sure you pass one of these courses. Important to remember, and I'm, hope, I'm, hope, I'm hoping to drive this point home. There is a difference between graduation and minimal requirements to get to it as opposed to setting up that transcript at the end of four years to be able to go into an undergraduate admissions office and be proud and say, here I am, I'm going to apply to your school. It's recommended that each student take a minimum of seven credits per year. We don't want to offer that. We want to say they should take a full load each and every year, the most competitive grueling schedule they could possibly take. A minimum graduation requirement should not be confused with college admission. And we're gonna talk a little bit about the park exam as soon as I get this off. The park text, uh, test needs to be taken seriously. Last year we didn't really know what the park really meant. Let's be honest, it was the first time how are they going to use it? We weren't really getting any guidance from the state. Now we know the park can be used for graduation. So it should be taken um, seriously and the kids should try to do the best they possibly can on it. It could be a graduation requirement, as I showed you before in the other chart. 
The park will assess students in three sessions, ELA, English 1, 2, and 3, and three sessions in math, Algebra 1, Geometry, and Algebra 2. By the time you're a senior, so long as you've taken all those three, there is no more park, you don't have to take it. Okay. Okay. Now you're going to talk about math and science with Mrs. Penasowicz. All right. Well, oh, raise the roof here, people. Come on. Let's be live. There we go. That's better. See, no one told you there's going to be a quiz at the end of this, but I will. All right. I hope you're paying attention. So, as Mr. Fierra said, I'm Yvette Penasowicz. I'm the supervisor for math and science, grades 7 through 12. So we're going to hold on to your hats and we're going to in investigate the world of math here. And quite honestly, this is going to be the most complex stuff to understand tonight because where your child will enter in mathematics in high school depends on the course they're currently enrolled in at the middle school. But this slide here is just an overview of the types of math courses that we offer here and Lawrence High School. And if you notice, we offer them all at a college prep or an honors level. All of our academic classes are offered at those two levels. The difference in the courses, most of the time, is in the pacing, sometimes in the depth of the skill and concepts that we cover, and sometimes in an honors class, we will cover additional skills and concepts that go beyond the content standards to prepare students for the exams that you just heard about. Here's the math sequence. So again, it depends on, I guess our little laser isn't working, but that first column where your child is in eighth grade, where they will be placed when they come here to the high school. And that differs from ever, for many of you sitting here in this room. A parent of a child sitting next to you may have a child entering in an Algebra 1, and the other person on the other side of you might have their child coming in as a freshman, and they're going to take Geometry Honors, or they may take Algebra 2 Honors. So again, I can't stress enough that it depends on which math class your child is in when they come into the high school, what their sequence will look like. How many years of math does every child need to have to graduate according to the state of New Jersey? Three. That's right, three of them. And what those requirements say is there must be algebra-based and geometry. So, the sequences that we have going across there include that. So, a child currently sitting in eighth grade math, which is the nationally normed math class, which is very pre-algebra-like, for those of you who perhaps are a little on the older side like I am, that might be a more familiar course to you. They'll come in, they'll do Algebra 1. They move on to the geometry at either level, college prep or honors, and Algebra 2. At that point, that child has met their three years. A fourth year of math is optional. We do have the electives available. A child that comes in entering in the geometry sequence will do Geometry Algebra 2 and then they have a plethora of courses available to them that junior year and again a fourth year. And the same holds true for the student coming in in Algebra 2 Honors and they will go over. Students take the PARC exam for the math class that they are in. PARC tests Algebra 1, Geometry, and Algebra 2. Now we're going to go over into the science classes. This slide here represents all of the classes that we offer. And one thing that I should have mentioned on my previous slide is we also have these classes called AP, Advanced Placement. They are college level classes that students can take while they are in high school. We have them across most of our academic areas. There are prerequisites to get in there. Freshman students do not enter in to high school taking a college level class. There are prerequisites. They need to take biology before they enter into an AP biology class, but we do have them there. So this slide represents the 
courses that we offer in the area of science. And how many credits do they need? How many years of science? And they need to be lab sciences. So we have those marked off on this slide here. Although our electives, forensic science, a very popular elective, does have a very big hands-on lab component, it is not fulfilling a graduation requirement, but it is an elective. So what does the sequence look like? We here in Lawrence say that all of our students will take biology and chemistry. That's a have to. So those are the first two courses that your children will take, either at the CP, college prep, or the honors level. In their junior year, the world opens up to them a little bit more. They have a choice of taking environmental or physics. And um, that's what it possibly could look like a three-year uh, science sequence for them. All of our classes have prerequisites. We work very hard to respect those prerequisites so that students are working at an appropriate level, not at a frustration level. And um, we think we have a nice offering for them there. And that's what we have in the areas of math and science. So I will be available at the end of the evening for any additional questions that you may have. And all of the same information you can find in those lovely course offering booklets that were provided to your child and to you on your way in here this evening. So I'm gonna turn this over now to Dr. Dillon. Thank you. Good evening, everyone. Glad to see so many of you here. Um, I get the pleasure of talking about English. English is a second language, social studies, and the world language program. So I have the most, but I promise I will be the quickest. English is easy. You need four years of English, and there are four full years of English. So in ninth grade, you take English one. Yay. In 10th grade, ooh, English two. Can you guess what's in 11th grade? Wow, English three, and in 12th grade, English four. Now, we do have a couple of uh, choices that you can take in place of English three and English four. So when you're in 11th grade, you can take English three, or English three honors, as you see, or you can apply to take the AP course. Um, the AP English Language and Composition, if the student takes a test at the end of the year, can qualify for college credit at a four-year college. Um, in grade 12, again, we have English 4, English 4 Honors, AP English Literature, which again is good for a four-year college, and new for next year, we're offering a dual enrollment program with Mercer County Community College, uh, in which our students will stay here at Lawrence and be taught by a Lawrence High School teacher, but actually receive credit from Mercer County Community College, so that when they graduate from high school, they'll have six college credits. Now, there is a cost associated with that, but it's at a much discounted rate than Mercer County even, which is the best deal going. So I'm really looking forward to implementing that class next year. This is gonna be our first year that we're running it. We do have some electives for freshmen, but again, most of our electives come later on. We have, as Ms. Sincata mentioned earlier, some academic support, and we do have, as Ms. Lopez mentioned earlier, literacy as our focus. So in order to just support our students who are struggling a little bit, we do have academic support instruction and academic support reading. But for fun, we do have public speaking one and two. They're two half-year courses, and a lot of our freshmen take it. It really boosts their confidence, and they're great uh, a sequence of classes to take. As students get a little bit older, we have a bunch of semester courses. It just keeps on going. All right, and then we have one full year course. So we have a lot of choices. Now the electives are not graduation requirements, but if students are interested in contemporary Shakespeare, yes! try. Okay. If they are interested in Shakespeare and want to take contemporary Shakespeare, we do have that. But again, that's first crack for the seniors, as Mr. Fiera explained earlier, and then we offer it down to the juniors. The full year elective course that we have is publications and journalism. That's generally a senior course. Students who are enrolled in that class work on the school newspaper as well as the yearbook for the school. So they are required to actually write, 
publish and go through all of the um, motions as if they were working for a newspaper corporation. See, I told you I'd be quick. Social studies. We only have three years of required social studies courses. So grade nine, our students have modern world civ. Grade 10 is American Civ 1. Grade 11 is American Civ 2. Now, in grade 11, we do have AP US history, which can be taken in place of American Civ 2. And many of our students opt to do that, but again, that's optional. It does fulfill the requirement that they would need. In grade 12, many of our students decide to take some of our social studies electives. And I don't know why this is coming up weird. We do have a lot of social, social studies electives. Um, as you can see there, we have history of film one and two. Great course, you and the law, sociology. But we offer, also offer a lot of AP classes. So the history department, if you're looking for AP, we offer there's these four AP classes plus the AP US history. So it's a great way, if you're interested in politics and studying about the world around you, to get an AP credit if you really want to challenge yourself. Oh, it just keeps on going. Did I miss anything else? No. All right. World language. Only one year of world language is required to graduate. That's <laughs> However, if your child plans to go to a two-year or a four-year college, they recommend more years of study in that particular language. Um, we do offer Spanish, Chinese, and French, which are currently offered in the middle school. Most of your children are already enrolled in one of those three languages. If they're doing well in that course, we suggest that they continue on, if they're getting an A or a B, in Spanish, Chinese, or French to continue their studies in that language if they're enjoying it. If they're not enjoying it or would like to try something different or would like to take two world languages, we encourage that as well. We also offer Italian and Latin here at the high school. English is a second language. We have a program here as well as district-wide, which I oversee. We have about 150 students in our program throughout the district, serving students from all around the world, speaking about 40 different languages. Um, here at the high school, we have a lot of support for our students in beginner ESL, intermediate, and advanced studies. They either have one or two classes, and we are currently doing the access test right now. We give them a lot of support and try to make sure that they're involved in the school as much as we possibly can. And with that, I'm going to pass it over to Ms. Rosen. Hi, everybody. I have the pleasure, like you, to help our students transition to the high school right now. That being said, everything that you heard prior to this slide, or read prior to this slide, in special education, we offer a full continuum of special education and related services through seventh grade, which I have seventh grade through 12th grade. So what you see here is in the four years of English, your student can participate in an out-of-class replacement model for students that are struggling um, with, sorry. So out-of-class replacement for some students with the option um, as they transition into in-class support services. We have that through English, history, math, science, and some electives. In addition, uh, and it would take a place of an elective, we have study skills resource support. That's a unique opportunity to get further support in their areas of academic that, that have, where they have relative weaknesses, and we really can pick up our students in that area. I will be here at the end of the evening if you have any specific questions, but please remember here at Lawrence High School, we have a full continuum of supports for our special education students. Thank you. Here's Allison. Hi, everyone. I'm Allison Fisher. I am the Director of Health, Physical Education, and Athletics. So I'm going to kind of talk about both of them. Uh, so first, let's start with physical education and health. Uh, our students are required to take physical education every year that they are enrolled in Lawrence High School. So 
hopefully none of our students are on the five-year plan, but if that happens, they actually, it's the only course required every year they are here. We have certain standards that we have to cover on the physical activity side and also on the health side. So PE here is offered um, for three quarters, and we do elective PE, which means that your sons and daughters will get to choose the activity that they're participating in. And we have three units for each marking period. So they'll actually get nine choices each year for physical education. Some of the options are badminton and volleyball and soccer and hockey, um, volleyball, which is one of their favorites here, um, which is a really fast-paced volleyball, which bounces off the walls. Um, and they also have to do one unit of weight training or weight program and as freshmen, two units of pool. And so those are worked into those nine different choices. Um, we do require all of our students to swim. Um, we, do have, we are lucky to have a pool at our facility, um, and they will have that twice, through, uh, as a freshman and twice as a sophomore. And then when they become a junior and senior, they only have to take one unit of swimming. Uh, so we are really fortunate to have that elective PE program because we do have students get to choose what they participate in. And it does, you know, it kind of takes the anxiety out of PE for a lot of our students. They're also going to have to take a health course each year. Freshman health uh, covers a wide array of topics. Um, one of the big ones that they cover in freshman health is um, they actually will get trained in CPR and AED and first aid. Um, and one of the most important classes of high school, of course, is driver's ed. They take driver's ed as sophomore students. We put driver's ed in the first two semester, uh, first two marking periods, I'm sorry, of their sophomore year. So all students will, will get a chance to learn everything that is necessary to pass the state driving exam, uh, the written form. Um, so we are very fortunate as well that we do offer, we do have one of our instructors that does teach behind the wheel um, after they've passed the written test, if it's something that uh, you can pay for. Um, the district doesn't cover that piece, but it is something that we do offer and one of our instructors does teach that course. So that comes as sophomores. Um, also, like I said, I am also the athletic director for the district. Um, so I am involved in the middle school athletics, uh, along with Mr. Bazinski down at the middle school. Um, but once you get to high school, you know, there's a lot more options here um, for, for athletics. There's a lot more sports and a lot bigger of program and a lot higher stakes as well. So it's going to take a while to, to list all of our sports. Uh, we do offer over 21 sports here at Lawrence High School. And each season, there is at least one sport that is a no-cut sport. Unfortunately, due to our facilities um, and resources, we do have to cut in some of our sports. If you go to the athletics website, um, it actually will tell you which sport is cut and versus no cut. And you can also visit a lot of our uh, websites for our programs and learn a little bit more about the coaches, learn, about, learn more about their training programs, their philosophies, and about whether or not they are a cut sport or not. Um, but these are the sports that we do offer here. Um, our sports seasons are broken into three sports seasons, the fall, winter, and the spring. Any freshman coming to the high school for the first time of being a high school student automatically gets to participate in two seasons. So all uh, ninth graders are automatically eligible for ninth and tenth grade. However, then, then they have to earn a certain amount of credit to maintain their eligibility for athletics. Uh, for next year's incoming freshmen, you guys will have a 6.75 credit requirement for eligibility. So again, you get like that freebie year. You get freebie fall and a freebie winter. Then when it comes time for, let's say I want to try out for softball in the spring, we're going to look back at that first semester grade. And if they don't acquire 6.75 credits, then they're not eligible to play a sport. So it's very important that we, when we do this, my coaches actually will have in power school, though you're going to see next year if you have an athlete, they're going to have a class and it's going to be their coach and it's going to be their sport. And the coach actually will see all of the grades and maintain and monitor that. And that helps keep our student athletes on target um, and keep them el all eligible. Um, to be, uh, be eligible to play a sport, um, we did now have online registration for all of our sports. We're rolling that out right now in the spring. Um, and they also have to have a physical. The physical 
can be done either through a school doctor or it can be done by our doctor. Our doctor um, comes in four times a year and does free physicals for our, for our athletes. There's one always at the end of June here at the high school, and we will offer it three more times, once in August, once in November, and once in February. The February date just passed. So we do offer these free physicals so that you don't have to, because I know sometimes with insurance, they don't, you know, every 365 days to the letter, they let you come back, and so, that can sometimes cause some scheduling issues. Like I just tried to schedule a physical um, for my niece, and they told me they didn't have appointments till June. Luckily, she's not in high school, and we don't have to worry about the athletic piece, but you can run into that sometimes. So we ask you to take advantage of the ones that our doctor does. Even if you get a physical with your doctor, our school doctor still has to sign it and still has to approve it. Um, they, they will sign on the physical. So it's also important to keep in mind that physicals have to be turned in a few weeks before each season to give our doctor time to sign off on them. If you hand in the paper the day before this season, they will not be cleared for practice the first day because of that fact that our doctor has to sign off on it. Also, um, we're going to kind of, you know, put the cart before the horse. So some of you I know did attend our um, program that we held about a month ago about college athletics. And unfortunately, it's not too early to start planning. If you have an athlete or someone really interested in uh, a sport, you have to start to plan for college, and I'm going to tell you why. NCAA is um, a group that manages the college athletic programs, and they have three divisions. Division one are the big schools that can offer money for athletics, Penn State, Ryder University. Um, and Division II is one step below that. To qualify to play a sport in a D1 or a D2 school, you have to, they have very rigid academic eligibility requirements. Um, it's a lot harder to be a college athlete now than it was even t five or 10 years ago. The GPA they used to go for, it was a 2-0. If you had a 2-0 or above, then generally you could play in a D1 or a D2 school, depending on what your SAT scores were like or your ACT. Now, they change that requirement to 2.3, and that 2.3 is only in your core classes. Math, English, social studies, science, and foreign language. That's it. So unfortunately, our electives don't count. They, you have to do them for graduation requirement, but they don't count for the NCAA. So that means it's really important that starting as a freshman, our athletes get very good grades especially in their core classes, because it's really hard as a junior and senior to start to make up for some C's and D's that you've gotten in your freshman or your sophomore year. There's a lot of information. I'm not going to go through it all with you now, but we will be holding programs once or twice a year throughout their whole time in high school to educate you on that NCAA process and to teach you more about these requirements. Um, you can also read on the NCAA website, um, ncaa.org. Um, they'll give you all of the information that you would need to know about what it takes to play a college sport. Okay, that's it for my piece. Again, if you have questions afterwards, I will be around. Um, I'm going to now introduce Dr. Barry Exa, who's the supervisor of a lot of things. I'll let him explain. <laughs> Thank you very much, Ms. Fisher. <clears throat> Thank you even more. All right. So, folks, I supervise about a half dozen different departments here in the district, uh, many of them K-12. to Some are only high school specific. And uh, for the purposes of my slides tonight, I'm just going to focus on the courses that your children will be able to take as freshmen. As you can see, if you've looked in the course manual already, there are additional courses beyond what are not showing up behind me. <laughs> there we go. Oh, good. Individually. That was a smart decision. Uh, <laughs> So in the business and technology departments, we have uh, five teachers, uh, three business teachers, two technology teachers, and uh, I want to point out just a, a few things. In an era in which a lot of schools, uh, a lot of districts are cutting back in the non-math and non-language arts related uh, departments, uh, I've been very impressed and very pleased and very honored to, to work in Lawrence where we are actively trying to grow our our. Uh, our uh, the, the programs I supervise, basically, <laughs> uh, with regard to fine and performing arts and with regards to business and technology. Um, the descriptions for all these courses are available in your course manual, but I want to point out a new course that we ran this year for the first time called Introduction to Social Media. This course will be is available to uh, freshmen 
uh, freshmen through seniors, so if this is something that your child is interested in taking, they absolutely may as one of their electives freshman year. Uh, the business courses go about halfway down to uh, sports marketing and management one and two. And we have a wonderful uh, DECA program here at the high school, which the students involved in a lot of the marketing classes as they get older uh, get to go to competitions across the state and also travel out of state to, uh, to compete against other students in the, in the world of business marketing and, and, uh, and management. In our technology department, we have, uh, again, a lot of courses available to freshmen, Inventions Innovations, uh, AutoCAD. We have a, whoops, we have a full TV studio. <laughs> Why did this happen to the technology supervisor? <laughs> That's okay, no one noticed. Uh, <laughs> and then we have, a, uh, we have a robotics and programming class that again is also available to the to freshmen. We do have courses in digital photography and videography, but those are for students in grades 10 and older. But again, it, it always pays as you're looking through the catalog in your freshman year to maybe kind of dog ear some pages or, or circle some course descriptions that look interesting because you've got three more years or your children have three more years of, of classes worth, worth taking. So if they see something that looks really interesting that they can't take just yet, it's worth kind of bookmarking and hanging on to for later. All right, in our family and consumer science courses, uh, family and consumer sciences are the courses that when I was in high school, when you were in high school, probably called home economics. And the shift in philosophy in those courses in the, in the many, many years since I've been in high school has been uh, more towards not so much the home piece, but the career piece and the, and the consumer portion. So for your freshman students, uh, if, if you have students who are, who are interested in a career in, uh, in the design industry, in fashion design, we have fashion, we have interior design, we have clothing, fabric, and construction. Of course, we have a wonderful foods prep program in our, uh, our high school here. Freshman students can take culinary uh, one and culinary two. I know there is a discrepancy between what's on here and what's in your booklet. The booklet says that's only open to grades, students in grades 10 through 12. That is incorrect. Freshmen can take culinary one and culinary two. Have to take culinary one first. A new course that we're, piloting, we, we're planning on running next year is Nutrition for Healthy Living, which takes a, a, a more health-based appro health approach, nutrition-based approach to the, to the food prep courses. And finally, in the Fine and Performing Arts portion, we have our theater program. Again, open to freshmen, our Theater One, which is the first of a three-course sequence. We have Theater One, Theater Two, and Advanced Theater Studies. We also, we also have musical theater as well. And we have Stagecraft and Design. For freshman year, Theater One and Stagecraft. And Stagecraft is more for the students who may be interested in the, uh, in, in the portions of, of the theater that don't involve acting as much, so set design and, uh, and Stagecraft. In our music program, we have a variety of, of ensembles. We have the string orchestra, concert band, wind and percussion ensembles, our concert choir, our ensembles and madrigals, and uh, new courses that are, uh, sorry, music and the human experience. And two, again, two new courses, we're growing. Um, students starting next year will be able to sign up to take piano and guitar courses. So if that's something that interests your child, maybe learning how to play piano, learning a little music theory, a little composition, and also learning how to play the piano, or if they know how to play piano, know how to play guitar, learning a little more about it, that, would be a, that might be an option for them as well. I'll take this opportunity to remind you of Sam's chart from the beginning. Yes, we have to have four years of English. Yes, we have to have how many years of math? <laughs> that's, for, that's for you, Yvette. Uh, but we also have to have uh, one full year of visual or performing arts. So we can, we can take painting one and painting two at some point, so some point over the course of your four years in high school. Um, you can take visual art and performing art. You can certainly take more than that, but that is the minimum graduation requirement. So I know sometimes these courses get referred to as electives, which they are, but they are also a component of the graduation requirements moving forward. And our, our visual arts classes, of course, uh, commercial art, pottery and sculpture, painting and drawing, again, all available to freshmen and all are the first step in a two or three course sequence. If the students really enjoy painting one, they can go on to painting two and so, far, and so forth from there. All right, Mr. Williams is gonna come up and talk a little bit about the scheduling process. Yay, all right. 
This is this is a bright light, so I'm going to stand off to the side because Sam just told me that this was recorded, and I have a phobia about being on TV. But um, my name is Mr. Williams. I'm the lucky guy that is in charge of scheduling all your students' requests. Um, one thing that I am proud of um, before we get started is when we schedule, we do not start with any courses being in any particular place. We tear down our schedule and rebuild it every year from scratch, which is a lot of work, and you probably can't see them because I try to keep my hair cut close, causes a lot of gray hairs. But we do it not because I like to do it, <laughs> and not because it's fun, but we do it because it's what's best for kids. Um, and that's, that's a lot of what drives what we do here at LHS. So. Just because AP Bio was fifth and eighth period last year doesn't mean that that's where it's going to be this year. And that's what helps our students to get a good schedule or as many courses as, as they can get or what we call their first request as possible. So we start from scratch. So kind of to go right back into our, uh, our PowerPoint. Um, you always want to pick electives. So even though I started off by saying I'm proud because most kids get their first requests, you have to have and you want to have electives. Most of your electives or your, your alternates, uh, your electives, you're going to want to have alternates to those electives. Most of those electives are one credit. Some of them are a half a credit. If you have a one credit elective, you're going to want a one credit alternate to that elective. But that doesn't always have to be the case. You could have a one credit elective and two half credit alternates. But you want to have eight courses on your schedule. Some of those courses, one of those courses can be a study hall. All right, there we go. So, another thing that I'm proud about, about being a part of Lawrence, is, is the fact that our kids actually get to schedule and the parents get to schedule with the kids. Uh, some districts, parents come in, kids come in, they meet with the guidance counselor and they do it all together and you, you, have a, you have a cheat sheet and you have to fill out the cheat sheet. Well, not, not in our district. In our district, it can all be done from home. So what you would do is you log into PowerSchool, your parent access, and you can sit down and choose the courses with your students. As you can see, there will be like, you'll see the English course. If you click the pencil, you'll have all the English courses that are available for the freshmen. Same thing for uh, physical education. Same thing for health, social studies, mathematics, so on and so on. This will be the screen that you will actually be choosing your electives and your alternates. It's very important that when selecting courses, specifically with electives, you want to choose alternates. So let's get into some of our scheduling timelines. Um, one thing that we uh, started doing is mailing home, mailing home our request pretty soon. As soon as scheduling's over, we take about 15 days. Scheduling usually, re scheduling requests actually usually ends around April 15th, which is tax day, and we take about two weeks to process, and we try to get those requests out to the parents, so you can see what your your students chose to make sure that your kid didn't come in and do a switcheroo, and you wanted them to take commercial art, but they decided to add another study hall on their schedule, and you get to see and verify that we try to send them home by the end of, by the end of April, first week in May. Um, your schedules and placement. Uh, recommendations um, are due also the 29th. Um, teachers, that will give teachers a great opportunity for the kids to d demonstrate whether they can perform in an honors level class. Um, at that point, you have uh, the, June 3rd is the final time where students can make request changes or schedule changes. After June 3rd, no more schedule changes or request changes, unless it's due to the part of, of the school. So if, it's, if your kid didn't get a course that they wanted to get, then that June 3rd deadline is kind of pushed back, okay? But if a kid got all their first requests, um, June 3rd would be that deadline. Final schedules. We would like to have final schedules mailed home um, 
probably like a week before school starts. That's what we usually aim for. Um, so students will have their schedule um, before they walk into school. That's what we've been aiming at um, for the past couple of years. Okay, helpful hints for successful counseling appointments. You want to review course selections prior to your appointment. So meet with your kids, use the cheat sheet, make sure you figure out the courses that the students should be taking, and then at that point, choosing alternates, okay? You want to come prepared with questions. Remind your student to be prepared for their appointment as their presence is key to the process, okay? Now, if you have any questions, specific questions about your child, what they're taking, what was chosen, these are the people you want to contact. These are your child's guidance counselors, and you might want to take a picture of this. It's broken down by last name. So Mrs. Welsh, she has A through D. Ms. Gonzalez has E through L, E. Mr. D'Angelo has LI through P. Ms. Coben has R through Z. You have their extensions, and their emails can be found on our webpage. So now I have some good news and some bad news. All right. The good news is our presentation at this point is over. Okay. The bad news is Mr. Fiera has to come up and close it out. And we have to. Ten minutes of Q and A. Oh. Oh, did I skip that slide? All right, so we're going with the Q&A. Remember, with the Q&A, you guys, I w let's try to keep the questions very general. Um, for specific questions, we're going to stay behind. Uh, we get paid to be here, so we will be here, but we don't want to hold anybody up for specific questions regarding you know, specific individual students. So questions, if some people can help me with mics, and we can get around and start answering some questions. Yes, uh, Mr. Fiera, handouts. Any more handouts? So we do have more course catalogs. It is also located online, and we'll see if we can get you. Okay, well, it's, the course catalog itself is online on our high school guidance webpage. I have to congratulate everyone here. I, we have, I counted 209 people here tonight, when in the past there's been 50 at best, so great job to everyone here. So we had a whole bunch extra. We ended up not having enough. So, right. here we go. Um, I got a question here. Mr. We almost Pierre. did it. Go ahead. Um, so, uh, we noticed on there that it said that the students would have to demonstrate a certain ability for certain courses. How do the freshmen demonstrate that ability? There are prerequisites in the course offering book for the ninth grade courses. So, you would just check what's there as their prerequisites, yes. Mm -hmm. And that's for across the academic levels. Mm -hmm. Uh, for foreign languages, <clears throat> you had mentioned that it's, it is recommended to have three to four years. Um, Italian and Latin, will they be offered for all four years? Yes, Italian is, and Latin are offered Latin one, two, three, and four, and Italian one, two, three, and four as well. Okay. I, I have a question on the electives. How many electives? in one year a student can take? Like the also, first year? How many, the, I, the question is how many electives will fit into a freshman schedule, is that correct? Yes, that's correct. Okay. Say, Mr. Fierro, that's your question. Yes. So every student will be taking an English, a math, a science, a social studies, a phys ed health, a world language, okay, so there's six, there leaves two. So they will take either any combination of one or two full years of an elective, like a full year elective, or one full year elective and two half year electives, or four half year electives that any combination has to equal two um, credits. So. 
That's how that works. It's a little tricky, so you want to make sure that if you, if you pick courses that, let's say you, you take a full year course and you think there's one, and you take your second one, and you don't realize it's only a half year course, that's only one and a half. You didn't pick the, the other half to make it equal to. So just keep that in mind, and every single course says how much it's worth, okay? One, one more question yes. on the teacher's recommendations. Like if, if a student picks honors and teacher says you are not allowed to take you know, honors, like what is the value of teacher's recommendations there? Teacher recommendation, and I'll speak to the area of mathematics specifically, um, although we do have teacher recommendations for all our other academic courses. Um, teacher recommendations sometimes can override a prerequisite of, let's say, a 96 in the prior course. The student has a 93, but the teacher gives the recommendation. We do err on the side of that, but I do want to say that we are very mindful of respecting the, cre the prerequisites that have been set. Okay, any summer courses offered as far as the math or that will cover for a full credit? Are you talking about summer classes offered here by Lawrence Township or summer classes that are available in general? Or in, in conjunction with a college in general? Yeah, there's that. some information in that in the course offering booklet. That's called option two. You can reach out to a counselor and they have a very uh, elaborate uh, matrix that they can share with you on providers and timelines and things of that nature. I have a question down here. Um, in regards to the earlier question on the honors classes, so what if they are not recommended by their teacher? What is the process to, I guess, waiver it, and what is the deadline? Sam, that's your question. I'm sorry, I wasn't paying, yeah. <laughs> paying attention. I was looking you were, around. I caught I you. <laughs> See, we caught you. The question was about if students don't make the recommendation, the prerequisites, and wanting to get into the higher level class, and the question was directly about waivers and timelines. Okay, so it's very important that, and uh, at the end I'll show you the, uh, a link that there's a video that talks more about it, but in the course selection book, it actually, there's a whole section on waivers. Keep in mind that there is a process for what course each student should be placed into. Teachers want to place a student into a course that they have the best chance to be successful. They do not want to place a student into a course and give a recommendation for, I hope they can do okay. That's not, that's not with full confidence. Um, as far as a prerequisite, if they don't make that prerequisite, that's kind of an indicator that maybe moving forward, they're not going to do as well. And the goal is, to make that transcript be as successful looking as possible. Now, with that said, if a parent feels, well, they didn't make the prerequisite and the teacher did not recommend the student, but I still feel that this wants to be, a, this is a class that I would like my child to go in, there are risk factors involved with a waiver. You can apply for a waiver, fill out the waiver, and the waivers are going to be available to you um, tomorrow, but at the middle school with the middle school counselors, and they have to be brought in any time before um, June 3rd. June 3rd is the deadline for waivers. No waivers are accepted past June 3rd. And they will be time stamped in the order that they are received. Um, but there are risk factors involved. And with that waiver, it has to go to a committee, and the supervisor has to approve it. So, I just passed English 1 with a 60. The teacher's recommending me for um, English 2 next year, but I want to go into honors English 2. Okay, you can apply for the waiver, but no one's going to sign off on a person that just barely passed and got in there to be able to go into an honors course. Okay? So, just keep that in mind. Most of the time, if it's a reasonable request, Depending on who the supervisor is, there's going to be a conversation between the parent, the counselor, the student, and the supervisor about this. Okay, so this is something that you want to, a lot of times people say, I'll just wave them in. And they wave in and they end up getting uh, a C or a D in the course that they waved into. And that's not as good as getting an A or B in the course that might be a little bit lower. So the end goal is to have the transcript that's going to be the best looking transcript you can possibly have. Not a transcript that have the highest courses, but mediocre grades. 
Keep that in mind. We've had many college counselors come in here, many from high school. Uh, and, and you can see on the website, there was a college, a, a college representative coming in every single day in the fall, and I made sure to ask that question. Unanimous 100% said, we'd rather have a hardworking student with good community service who has a good transcript with rigorous courses, not necessarily honors or AP, but are good students, as opposed to the students who are in the AP and the honors courses, have mediocre grades, and don't do much else. Keep that in mind. Okay, sorry, that was a long-winded answer. Okay, I'll keep it shorter. One thing I, I forgot to mention um, in regards to scheduling. Um, the portal for the schedule, the, the parent access portal, will be open for one week, okay? And there's a reason why it's only open for a week. It, it will be open until, I believe we said same March 3rd. Um, and the reason is, when they sit down with the counselor, we don't want too much overlap so that things are being changed after the students sit down with the counselor. So we will be leaving the portal open for one week. The portal is open tonight. So you can get on right now from your cell phones and actually start to put in your course requests. And Miss Jari has her phone out right now and she's signing her kid up for AP English. And he's not even a freshman yet. Oh, Wednesday, here I come. How, how do we know what the teacher recommendations are for next year? Teacher recommendations for next year. Um, they do show up uh, preliminary recommendations on report cards. Um, middle school teachers, Mr. Fiera, have placed them into power school for the guidance counselors to see them at this time. Can I chime in too, Yvette? Sure. I'm sorry. And you will be able to see them when you start scheduling your kid. So once you go into that course, if the, if the middle school guidance counselors, not guidance counselors, but the teachers have put them in. So if they're put in on power school, you will be able to see them. But there's some courses that are half year courses that the students had, hadn't had time to demonstrate that yet. So you will see that when we mail home the course requests. If the student got into or selected for an honors class, it will also be on the course requests that are mailed home by April 30th. So for all of you sitting here, your students have completed science. They, they had their semester of science over at the middle school. So their science recommendation should be available for you to see and has been made based on the information provided. But they just started social studies. So there wouldn't be a recommendation in for social studies for next year at this time. My question has to do with scheduling. It's very confusing right now. Um, if a child is in OCR, how do I know on the scheduling what, what is what? Again, those kind of questions, and it's, yeah, they're particular, and, and, and she's right there. So that's more of a particular kind of thing. Um, and there's other questions that are going to be like that that are going to be very specific. That's why we're here. Um, uh, and that's still, that's a great question. So other people are gonna have that question. I am sure of it. So this is where, this is where we have to bring uh, Mrs. Rosen to come in afterwards to speak to them. Okay, go ahead. My question is actually in reference to the parks test. Um, so we're a newbie coming into the district and I heard you mentioned that this year was the first year of the parks test. It's actually, it was last year. It was last year, okay. Where can I find those results? How did Lawrenceville do? Um, you can actually find them right on our webpage. So if you go to um, the Lawrence Township District site, schools, high school, guidance, <laughs> and then under guidance, there's a whole park section. It tells you everything. It gives you practice tests, results of past, uh, past tests, how we did, how to read, scores, everything's there. Very, yes. We actually were, we actually did very well considering all the obstacles that the, that, that first year puts in place. And that first year that, that uh, the things were put in place were students didn't know if this test was really gonna mean anything or count, and how do you get students to buy into something that you're not even sure about? Now that we have more concrete things, now the whole mindset has changed. So considering that, we did well. 
we're going to do better and even better as we get, as 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 we progress because that's our baseline year. Question. We're just seeking a little clarity on the timeline of the scheduling process, like this whole guidance counselor thing. What, ex what is the exact order of events? Okay, so it's all in the course of study, just so you know, there is a, a con, yeah, it tells you right in it, but that's okay, it's a good question. Um, so what, this is the process. So what's gonna happen with your particular students? We just met with them today in big groups. We gave them these books. We're meeting with you tonight. We gave you these books. I'm gonna show you there's a video online that you can watch all again that's specific with every supervisor talking about their subject and we go through the course of studies page by page. It's an hour. It might be a two or three you know, times to go back to it to sit through the whole thing, but it's very informative. And um, what's gonna happen is tomorrow, I believe, I believe it's tomorrow, your child is, are, is going to get an, a, a time an appointment time and date of when the middle school, uh, the high school counselors coming over to the middle school to meet with them. So they're gonna get that tomorrow. On that day, they're gonna get a pass in homeroom, let's say, all of a sudden you, know, you get the time for next Wednesday at 10.30. They're gonna tell them that, they're gonna get that time, and then that morning, to remind them, they're gonna get the pass. So, to come meet with the counselor. It's a 10 minute meeting. That's why you want to have all your work done ahead of time and all your courses picked right in PowerSchool. It's the easiest way to go. There's also a worksheet that is on the back of the cheat sheet that you can fill out your worksheet and have your son or daughter come in with that worksheet. And all really the, the counselor does is make sure they're put in the PowerSchool. Okay? And you can view them at any time from that point on. Now with the recommendation process, some teachers have recommended some teachers have not for their core courses, meaning English, science, math. That's okay. You can choose the class that you feel you can at that time. That may change based on the recommendation. Now, teachers change recommendations as well. That's why their last day to put recommendations in is April 29th. They may recommend them now for one class and realize, you know what? They've changed my mind. They're really doing amazing. I'm gonna change that and move them up, or on the other end, move them down. So just keep that in mind that those recommendations change. Once April 30th comes, no more recommendations go in, and that is the, the basis for what class they're going to go in based on their recommendations and prerequisites. And once you see that, you get that mailed home, that confirmation letter, and you see, wait a minute, that's not the English I signed up for. That's when you look on and see the recommendation and go, okay, then you have to make that decision. Is this is acceptable? Is this gonna be the best placement? Or do I go the waiver route and, and try for that? That's basically how it works. And I hope I'm explaining it well, but I'll be more than happy to explain more and, afterwards. Again, and once again, things. Mr. Fierro, yes. we just wanted to, a point of clarification. You can start selecting those courses tonight. The portal is open. We made sure it was open before we started the program. So as of tonight, the portal is live. We have four more minutes, just so you know. Just a follow-up question on the same process. He just said it's open right now. It's open for a week through March 3rd. So all the counselors meeting with the students will be after March 3rd? Because it gives one week to put in place, then starts the discussion with the individual students, and then you finalize. So that's the whole process. And if it's beforehand, don't forget, it's gonna be open a week. So, um, you wanna get in there right away. You don't wanna procrastinate and wait. Because once it's closed, that doesn't mean you still can't make the changes. That means you just have to go in with the sheet. And you know middle school students, they like to lose everything and leave everything behind. So you're hoping that sheet makes it from one place to another. You know if it's in the, if it's in the computer in power school, it's done. Okay, yes, I'm gonna go back to you. I don't want to monopolize this side. Is there anything over there? No? Okay. So going back, back to the placements, uh, the question here, maybe there's some anecdotal, maybe an anecdotal evidence. Is it possible that a child could be not recommended for the honors course, but then take the regular course and just be stellar throughout that whole year and then go on to honors the next year? Yes, that is possible. 
And, and has it happened, I guess, or does it happen uh, with any kind of frequency? Yes, it happens. <laughs> it does. It's, it's, it's not uncommon. So just because a child is not in, in an honors course as a ninth grader doesn't mean that their teacher won't later recommend them for honors courses, maybe their sophomore, junior, <laughs> or senior year. So you're not stuck in college prep courses. I'd also like to point out that your children right now um, will, do not have the same academic course load that they will when they come across here to the high school. Currently, they take either science or social studies. Here at the high school, they're going to have all of their academics at the same time for a full year. So they're going to have a full year of science and a full year of social studies which is very different from the format of their academic course load over at the middle school. So as you think about this and, and wanting you know, the, the best for your child, please also realize there's one, there's gonna be those two academic subjects at a full year for them as well. And that's a lot to juggle for some students with the transition coming here to the high school as well. So you may want to pick and choose, you know, courses that you would be interested at an honors level as opposed to having the idea that you want them all at an honors level. We were asked, do they move from the college prep to the honors? Yes, they do. And many times with waivers, we have to struggle with decisions if there happens to be a misplacement to move students from the honors to the college prep as well. So I just wanted to bring that to your attention. That's one big difference in their schedules when you compare their current middle school experience and coming here to the high school. Okay, so there is some information that I'd like to leave you with. Again, we're here. I know everyone's, you know, trying to also make it back to, I think at nine o'clock there's that J-Lo cop show, which is very good. So if you want to make that, you can still do we it. We already missed the Big Bang Theory, so, you know. Okay, it's, so. It's done. Um, what you can take with you tonight is everything that you've learned, and if you forget, no worries. This PowerPoint will be on the LHS Guidance website. Um, this video, this whole thing is being recorded. It's going to be on the LHS video. What I also would suggest for you to watch, and I'm gonna show you how to get to it, is you go to the Lawrence Township Public Schools district page. You go to schools. You go to Lawrence High School. You go over to the left to Guidance. And then one more down to course of study. This is where the videos are gonna be when you go in here. This, uh, tonight's presentation will be in here probably in a couple days. And then the course of study is right here. And there's one long video, okay, that will tell you everything from page one to page 46, and I'm making that up, I don't know what the last page is on, on the book, but we'll go through every page with every supervisor here uh, you see tonight, and there's also small little modules. You just wanna hear about English and World Language? It's right here. You wanna just hear about math? It's right here. Social studies is right here. Science, physical education, electives, all right here for you to just click on and watch a little snippet of. Okay, at the end of the video, Mr. Williams does a fantastic job of actually walking through, you, through with you how to get on PowerSchool, step by step, with the computer screen right on the screen for you to watch, so you can do it. It's also written in directions in the Course of Studies book. Step one, turn computer to on, position. Step two, ev everything, you know, for all uh, you know, our sequential learners. Okay, so there's a lot of information. We'll be here afterwards tonight to answer any questions. Please give a big round of applause to all of our supervisors for a great job tonight. Be safe going home. Thank you very much.